Welcome. Welcome. To Lighting for Profits with Ryan Lee, your number one source for all things landscape lighting. From lighting design, install, sales and marketing, we discuss everything you need to know to start and grow a successful landscape lighting business. What is up? How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. My name is Ryan Lee. I'm the host here of Lighting for Profits here on Turfs Up Radio. Five o'clock Eastern, which means it's time to talk landscape lighting. I'm so excited to see you. So excited you're here. Guys, there's nothing like live radio. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm getting ready to hit the record button, hit the go button, and my mic, boom, like falls off the table. <laughs> oh, I love it. I'm still a rookie at this, still learning work in progress and uh it's a lot of fun it keeps me on my toes every week i usually you know forget to do something or whatever so as long as we're recording then i'm happy so i'm happy hope you guys are doing well guys we got an awesome show i already warned you when we started this i was going to say that every week but i'm really excited you guys today i'm going to be joined by the one and only mark carlson mark is a, a stud i mean this guy he owns uh avalon lighting design he's also the founder and you know principal of ellie which is the experiential landscape lighting initiative and uh talk about doing something right and really making it your passion and, and i'm excited to have him on because he's like a lighting design guru and he's probably going to make me feel guilty and feel bad for uh for some of my designs and maybe he'll call me out uh, because I'm I'm just not as gifted in that arena. So I'm excited to have him on, pick his brain, and see ways that we can improve ourselves, improve our businesses by learning better lighting design. And we're going to talk about a lot of the benefits of that. So I'm, I'm really, really excited. Guys, uh, what's up, Rick Carmen? Uh, thanks a lot for joining me live. How you doing? I uh, hope you guys are doing well, you and Rosemary. Uh, so... Guys, I want to just give you a quick reminder, and then I'm going to I'm gonna bring it back, okay? I, I, it was a chance that it was going to be a one-week wonder, but we're bringing it back. Prank My Business is on today. I'm going to be pranking another business today, so hang tight. But before we get to that, I want to remind you that Lighting for Profits is now on all the podcast networks. So go to Apple, Google, wherever you listen, Spotify. I even saw, um, I Googled myself. I Googled Lighting for Profits. And it was on Audible. So there you go. It's free. Just don't don't pay because I'm not getting any money. So go listen. And uh, don't forget to give me a review, okay? If you guys like what you're hearing. If you don't like what you're hearing, then don't give me a review, okay? I'm only interested in five-star reviews. So go and help a brother out. Go and uh, give me a five-star review wherever you listen. And then I want to remind you of some free resources that I've got available. I've got my uh, Landscape Lighting Mastermind is the name of the private Facebook group. It's free. Uh, you do have to put in your name and your business because I don't want everybody in there, but, uh, go ahead and uh, join that. And it, it's a free group. Of course, you, my YouTube channel as well. Uh, I've got a monthly free webinar that I do with Ryan Jaso. If you want an invitation to that and you're not already getting those, then just shoot me an email at support at ryanleecoaching.com. And, uh, lastly, the only thing that's not free is joining my coaching program. So go to landscapelightingsecrets.com. If you're ready to level up, if you're ready to take your business to the next level and you're sick and tired of being stuck in your business, you want to go from being business operator to being business owner. And you can schedule a free strategy session with me. We'll sit down and talk about what things you can do to work on your business. So got all the business things out of the way. And as a reminder, I'm going to have a uh, good friend, Mark Carlson on. And this guy is a lighting design uh, stud muffin. I mean, this guy knows his stuff. So, uh, this is, this is one of the coolest parts of my job is I get to, um, sit down with these guys, pick their brains. And one of the cool things that you get to do is you get to sit there, sit back and, and relax and, and enjoy it. So stick around for that. Uh, but yep, it's time you guys, it's time for prank, prank my business. So we are going to prank a lighting business right now. Are you with me? Who wants to do this? Let's do it right now. All right, let's see. Let me get to the. Let me get the uh, phone dialed up here. 
All right, here we go. So I'm going to call in Phoenix, Arizona, stay off the roof. Okay, Christmas light company, landscape lighting company. We're going to call them, give them a hard time and see, uh, see how they handle it. Because I know I wouldn't be handling it well, that's for sure. So here, let, let's give them a call real quick. Thank you for calling Stay Off The Roof. Hello, I'd like to get a quote for some outdoor lightning. Sure. Can you tell me more about your project? Well, I'm just looking to get an idea because I'd like to get some of that nice lighting that I see on your website with uh, on the home exterior. Okay. And what, what type of, like on the actual home itself? Yes, I believe they're called solar lights. Do you offer, I'd like to get some solar lights. Who am I speaking with? This is Harold Adams. I'd like to get a quote, but I'm just not sure because now do you, do you offer the, the lights on the roof because it says stay off the roof and I'd really like to get some lights on the house, but I'm, I'm confused. Um, well, our name is just kind of like a playoff play on words. Um, there's something fun, but, um, yeah, so we do the outdoor lighting, um, solar, um, we use led lights, not solar lighting. Um, so. What city are you located in? I'm in Gilbert, but I'd really Gilbert? like to get some solar because I don't want to spend a lot of money, you know? It's like, I, I just feel like having all those lights on all the time is going to be through the roof with my energy bill, right? Um, not LED. LEDs um, are low voltage, so um, they're not going to really make your power bill too much more. And you can do um, them on the roof now, you say? Um, well, we'd have to come out and give you an estimate and, um, and like, see, like, what your roof, I'm not sure exactly how, you know, the installation exactly goes. I'm not an installer. I just um, get them out there to, you know, look at what your house is and, like, what they can do for you. So I'm not sure if they can do it on your roof, but it's something we can, we can look at and see. I'm not sure to. because it says stay off the roof. So I thought, okay, well, that's why I'm calling because I don't want to be on the roof. So I thought I'll find someone that could be on the roof. And then here I am talking to stay off the roof. I just don't know. Okay. Well, like I said, if you want to book an estimate, we can, we can come out there. We don't want you on your, on your roof. If you, if you don't want to be there, definitely we have people calling and they've like fallen, taking their lights down and don't want that for you. So What's your availability this week for an estimate? Well, I'm not sure I'm ready to move forward yet. I still have a couple questions. Okay. Could you tell me what beam spread? I was reading about beam spread. Is that some, I don't understand what that is. It reminds me of something like butter, you know, the, the butter that you spread. Mm -hmm. Does it have anything to yeah. do with that? Um, no, it doesn't. Um, but you know what? You know, it would be really helpful for me is if you could um, go on our website and if you could um, request a quote here for me so I can get some more information about you and what you're looking for um, then I can I can um, I can get that information for you um, like the beam spread and things if you and I'll get the information and call you back with that okay well that so, would be lovely um, that would be lovely yeah perfect so, I just don't be know because I, I hear I'm like what is this beam spread it's like butter. It's like, it reminds me of Grey Poupon. You've seen that old commercial. Right. Do you have any yeah. Grey Poupon? And I'm like, are these guys, are these guys nuts? They're staying off the roof. They've got beam spread. They've got Grey Poupon. I mean, who are these guys? I need to give them a call. Well, thank you for giving us a call. I'm going to leave it at, um, if you could re leave, uh, visit our website at stayofftheroof.com. Discuss, get a quote and fill that out for me. And then I will give you a call back with any other information okay but um that is all i have for you today and thank you for giving us a call you have a lovely day you too thank you so much bye now hopefully you talk to you soon all right bye, -bye. wow okay i want to thank
stay off the roof. I want to thank Jonathan over there who owns it and Paige who answered the phone and putting up with me. Thank you guys so much for putting up with me. And I feel I gosh, I kind of feel bad, you know, because I'm being this jackass and they're trying to do their best, but they're like, like you could just tell she was onto something and like, I want to get away from this guy. I want to get off the phone with this guy. And there I was doing my terrible British accent. And uh, I don't know. I th thank you so much for putting up with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed our uh, our segment of prank my business. So a lot of fun. If you guys want your business to be pranked, shoot me an email. Support at ryanleecoaching.com. Shoot me an email. Support at ryanleecoaching.com. And I'll prank your business. You can even pick the accent. You can pick the character. And I will be that person. You can pick the topic. But thanks again for putting up with me stay off the roof in phoenix arizona so uh, a lot of fun a lot of fun and you guys i'm just trying to mix it up you know I, I i try to be super educational most of the time and sometimes i'm like you know i need to mix it up you know we need to have some fun so uh hope you guys enjoyed that and again if you want me to prank your business or you want me to prank a friend's business uh and set them up for success then uh let me know so, guys, uh, one thing I want to remind you about when it comes to lighting, gosh, man, this this is not just lighting, but really business in general. One of the things that I've found, is there's businesses who like figure it out and they succeed. And these guys are like the rainmakers. These guys just figure it out. They get momentum and they and they start growing and they scale. And then there's the everybody else who's like grinding all the time and can't really figure it out. There's 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 several things, but one of the things that I've found is those people that are willing to take risk. Okay, those that are willing to take risk are the companies who end up either failing, right? Because they took too much risk or they end up doing really, really big things because they were willing to take that risk. Now, the risk I'm talking about isn't just like, okay, let's go roll the dice in Vegas. Okay, the risk I'm talking about is a calculated risk, studying other businesses, other people, uh, signing up for courses, programs, things like that, and finding out what calculated risk, what things work, right? Because in most cases, when it, when it comes to growing a business, there's not a whole lot of risk because there's other people who have given us the blueprint. And so if you do things right, it's a very highly calculated risk. And in fact, there isn't a whole lot of risk because other people have done it in front of you, right? So I I, I think that, you know, a lot of people, instead of, instead of they, they just make excuses, I guess, right? And I was guilty of this too. I mean, for years, I held myself back because I was like, well, I can't afford to hire an office manager, right? And it was like, well, it's too risky because then what if, you know, I can't make that money, whatever. And that, that was just an excuse, right? But I do know that when I was able to take that risk and I decided to move forward, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me because it freed up my time. And as we all know, time is our greatest asset. Time will never get back. We can always figure out a way to make more money. We can't figure out a way to make more time. So the sooner you start uh, hiring your replacement, the sooner you're going to start to get that time back and gain that freedom that you're looking for as a business owner, okay? And I tell everyone, listen, if you're going to be a business owner, you better make a lot of money or not need a lot of money because it's there's a lot of headaches that go with it, right? And it better be worth it because there's a lot of other highly paid jobs out there that have better benefits, better hours, better boss than than ourselves, right? We're not very good bosses to ourselves. We, we put ourselves through the ringer. So, uh, you better make a ton of money so that you can have a ton of freedom. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. Like, just go get a job, right? And so I want to encourage you guys to take some risk, okay? Um, if you can't afford to take the risk, then that means you're doing something wrong, you, you know, okay? You need help, which means you need to take a risk. So it's kind of like this never-ending, like, is it the chicken or the egg first? But make sure you're you're taking risk. You've got to be able to do it. Otherwise, if you're just conservative all the time, you're not going to ever move forward to where you know you should already be. And every minute, Every hour, every day that goes by is a lost opportunity for you to make a change. So now is the time. This is up to you. You are in the driver's seat. Okay. Are you going to stay on the service road and just kind of take the back roads to where you're trying to get to? Where, you know, it might be safer, you know, might be, you know, slower speed limits, whatever. Or are you going to get the courage, get on the freeway with me, right? Get in the fast lane with me. We don't, we don't mess around. We're in the fast lane and we, we don't even go the speed limit. Okay. I'm a rebel. We go seven over. <laughs> Okay. We go seven over. Yeah, it's a risk. Okay. I know that, but I've ended up shaving hours of time off of road trips because of the seven hour, nine, nine over, whatever it is, right? Go a little bit over and you're going to shave off tons and tons of time, shave off that learning curve. All right. It's not for everybody. 
Okay. Some people want to take the back roads. It's not for everybody, but I promise you, if you will just learn to take a little bit of risk every day, you're going to be in a lot better position than you were six months from now. Right. All right, guys, listen up. We've got whoa, too loud. All right. We've got uh, my buddy, Mark Carlson coming up just right after this break. So like less than two minutes. So stick around and uh, I got to play these uh, ads. You know, you got to do what you got to do. But then stick around because I'm going to have Mark Carlson and we're going to pick his brain and figure out how he got to the level that he's at right now. So stick around. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. It's Brooke Ford, host of The Green Veteran here on Turf Up Radio. Be sure to check me out every Saturday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. You're going to hear some great one-on-one -on -one interviews with green industry professionals. We're going to talk about best business practices, highlight innovative products, and also provide some insight into some new emerging technologies in the field. That's The Green Veteran airing each Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern. And remember, Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. Hey, landscape pros, are you tired of digging through rocks and roots and breaking shovels in the process? Then it's time you checked out the Geo Ripper 616. It's a landscaper's dream with the Makita 6 Series two cycle engine producing over four horsepower of raw performance. The 616 digs deep in up to 16 inches of the toughest soils. Lighting, landscape, and irrigation contractors already love this improved lightweight trencher with its ability to get in and get out faster, easier, and with less ground disturbance. And and you will too. This redesigned Geo Ripper 616 comes with two heavy duty digging chains and a whole mess of helpful extras. To learn more about the Geo Ripper and how it can help you out in the field, visit georipper.com today. Do you hear that? It's quiet. No sounds of anger, attempts to throw a phone or computer out the window, or annoyance trying to change your business to make it fit into a software program. Crew Control just works. It's easy to do your scheduling. You can be up and running in less than a day. It's got everything you need and nothing you don't. Give it a try for yourself with our two-week free trial, crewcontrol.com. That's crewcontrol.com. All right, guys. Welcome back to Lighting for Profits. I'm Ryan Lee, the host here. And now I am joined by the one and only Mr. Mark Carlson. How's it going, Mark? Doing great. How are you doing, Ryan? I'm doing awesome. Thanks a ton for being here, man. I really, really appreciate you taking the time out of your day, out of no your problem. schedule to be here, man. Hey, well, here's, I guess it's five o'clock back <laughs> there, your time. Cheers to you. I've got a little Don Julio going as a, this is the sixth episode for you. So, yeah, you, all right. You and your, the landscape lighting secrets. There you go. Thanks, man. Oh, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Oh, very, very cool. Oh, that is sweet. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for celebrating the sixth episode. And thank you there for you going to be the sixth person on the show. Wow. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. I mean, I know you, but um, you've been in the, you've been in the game a while. So tell us, how, you know, how you got in the lighting industry and, and how you ended up here. Well, it's kind of a it's a long story, but I'll try and keep it real brief because I've I've been a jumper um, most of my life in terms of kind of being a Renaissance guy. I'm a drummer on the side, so I'm in three different bands. I do this. Both of those are my passions. I started back, let's see, in college, I got my degree in 87 from Long Beach uh, in botany. So study plants. I was working for a couple landscape architects at the time. So I really, I, my passion was more on the design side. And I thought, I don't want to live in a laboratory looking under a microscope the rest of my life. So I thought, well, let's kind of pursue that side of it. So I got into landscaping and I started working for a couple of contractors and ultimately I gained enough experience in the field. So I got my uh, contractor's license around 92. And then I started jumping a little bit. So I went into the army for about seven years. That was more as a reservist and a guardsman. And then, um, thank you for your service. Well, thank you. And, um, then I did a couple other things. I was a production manager for a while for a window manufacturer, Hunter Douglas. 
um, was a general manager in food service. I worked as a junior engineer for Kiwit Pacific, which so I, we helped to rebuild the San Diego airport. I was in charge of all the utilities out there at the time. And then I finally got back to the point where I said, you know, I, I really want to go back into the whole landscape thing. And I worked with a landscape architect here in town up in Northern California. And then I went to a seminar and it was Nate Mullins from Unique Lighting. And that's what got me all fired up about, you know, starting just going specifically into lighting. So that was in 98. And then once 99 hit, I started my own company. And I loved how your last topic, you were talking about taking risks. And I was the kind of guy in this area here, nobody had started any company just doing landscape lighting only. So I said, well, that's what I want to do. So I took the risk and I did it. And everybody was saying, oh, it won't, you can't do it. You have to be a landscaper. You have to do another trade. There's no way you can survive. Well, we did, and I turned it into a corporation. I had a partner and we had about five or six employees and we're going great. And then I found out my partner and I were complete opposites. So that didn't work out too well. And I finally got to the point where, and this was around, I want to say 95, nine, no, I'm sorry, 05, 06 timeframe where I gave him the option, either I walk away or you walk away and I'll take the business back. And that's what ended up happening. I went back to being a sole proprietorship and then I kind of cruised on and that's where I'm at today. Although there's been a few changes. So for sure. Um, so what do you think it is about landscape lighting specifically that, that calls your name? It, that attracts you well, and me specifically guy, my competitive advantage is just design. So I believe that my skills and my background um, allow me, that's my best avenue to, to go after. So when I meet with clients, I'm able to sell them on my design skills. And so I have a little presentation that I do for them. And then I talk about why I think I'm better than my competition. And, and then I just leave it into their their court to choose. Usually they they'll go with me. Once I get a chance to talk to them, I can sell them and get them, get them on board. And then it's a, it's a relational experience. So. For sure. But what is it? Do you think that like, what, why is landscape lighting your thing? Like, you know, cause you've had, you've got this broad history. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason I'm asking this, cause one day I think it might be 20 years from now, one day there might be somebody that's like, Oh yeah, I grew up knew, knowing I wanted to be a landscape lighting guy. It might be yeah. one of our kids or something, but that doesn't happen. Right. So no. what was it that like called you and you're like, you came back and you're like, you know, what? I want to be the landscape lighting guy. Uh, I want to be the design specialist. Like why, why was that you think? Well, something stirred me back when we, I first started learning how to do the business and when, you know, and everybody goes through this, when you light up the first time a, a project and you get to see it at night, and how powerful that that display, the visual is. Um, it just really, you know, it attracts people. And I really, I just fell in love with it. And then I started seeing the reactions from customers where I had a lady one time when I turned the system on, she just started crying. She just loved it. And that was a, you know, that was pretty powerful. When you see somebody that emotionally just breaks down because of something that you've created, that's, that's, that's a fun thing. It's so that's always, kind of in, yeah, it in, inspires you to do more and learn more. And then that's kind of what led me to up towards today is I started seeing these patterns um, where there's this emotional connection. And so you're impacting, you know, human psychology. You know, we, we have that ability with lighting. So, that's what's attracted me. And it's it. I continue to learn after 22 years um, of just doing this strictly. And, um, you know, so it keeps you keeps you motivated, keeps you moving forward. No, oh, I, I like I love your story. I love your passion for design. It's 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 awesome. And, you know, it it within within the lighting industry, you've you've made a name for yourself because of that, because you've kind of fallen in love with that. And in my opinion, you're like the lighting design guy, like that's your thing. Um, so talk to me about that. Like, is there any studies or anything, any data that talks about the benefits of lighting? 
or is that just we know it because no, I, I think died. herein lies part of the problem in our industry. Uh, education when it comes to design. So, you know, you have Jan Moyer's book, the landscape lighting book, which is a great book. And, you know, but you get the technical side, you, you get to learn about the materials, you get to learn a lot about design. But then you look at the industry and because landscape lighting is still such a small niche community, there's no real emphasis put on it. So where do you go to find design? You know, there's 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 some courses that are being taught. And then most of the training that we're getting today is from manufacturers and distributors. Well, they're catering strictly to the entry and maybe mid-level lighting guy. And they just recycle material and then that's all that's out there. So where do you find advanced education? And there's not a lot available, I don't think. So I've been, you know, I read a lot, you know, with my book collections, I experiment all the time. I'm out there in the field, I'm working with demo kits or I'm, you know, I don't do a demo kits as part of my install, but I use them for learning as a learning tool. And then talking to other guys, networking, you know, that's a great way to gain insights. You know, you talk to other like pros. Um, so, you know, like with the AOLP, they have, you know, the networking opportunities at the organization to get together and talk to others about what they're doing. So yeah, that's, sure. that's a good thing. Um, I mean, mentors. Glad, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm glad you brought up a demo, actually, because I know in some of the groups online, people go back and forth like, you know, do you do a demo? Do you not charge for a demo? Do you charge? And I think that what you just talked about was is super important because it, it may not be part of your sales strategy or whatever else. But if, if nothing else, it does teach you a ton. I know for me, oh, it does. I didn't for know sure. anything about yeah. landscape lighting at all. And it was like, mm -hmm. oh, you hold that light there. And you're like, that looks pretty dang good. And then right. it melts and you're like, actually, that doesn't look very good at all. I thought it did, but look at this mm -hmm. better light, you know? So, right. Right. I'm a, I'm a big fan of demos. If nothing else for that reason alone. Well, I, th I think de demos are critical for, for newer people in the industry, especially like if you're using it as a sales or a design tool to sell a job, it's a great way to do it because it is impactful for the customer. But once you get past a certain point of learning, then is it worthwhile doing for like every job lead you get? And that's where, you know, you get into that topic about, you know, do I charge for it? Do I not? I would charge for it if it was to become a routine because you lose a lot of money or a lot of time doing the demos. Um, but if you're using it for educational purposes, like I was saying, you know, maybe you, you have your own yard and your own, you know, area that you can play around with ideas. Maybe you come up with a new concept. Hey, how would this look if I shine light through this type of glass or get a reflection off? You can play around with those types of things on your own and that's educational. But as a sales tool, I think, again, you have to draw the line of where, when do you lose too much money? you know, and doing it if you're doing them for free. Yeah. Well, and so, honestly, I believe it's an investment. I mean, it's yeah. like, it's like when you test drive a car, like they could charge you to test drive it, you know, because it's taking their time or they know, like get the guy in the driver's seat, he's probably going to buy the car. And it's the same right. thing. It's, it's very rare to show someone lighting when, it, when mm -hmm. done right. I mean, there's, there's some guys like, no, I did 12 demos and I didn't close any. Well, you did it wrong, you know, but when, when done right, you show that demo, I mean, people love lighting and oh, yeah. talk about yeah. that emotional aspect. They feel it and people buy an emotion. So right. I love the, the topic of lighting design for that reason, because I'm a big sales guy. Like I want to grow a business sure. on a scale, but lighting design is such an important piece of that. Right. Now, here's another side to it. If the reason why another reason I don't do demos at all is that you can take your uh, photos. You know, I have a ton of photos from from past jobs and you can use that as your demo in a sense where you can walk them through and get them just as excited looking at your, what you've done and then talking them through that, you know, as you walk around and explain why you did what you did, then you can sell just as easily there, I think. So let me ask you, let me ask you your experience because uh -huh. like I said, 
I'm a big like business guy, sales, and I I feel like there's a lot of guys out there that are really talented designers, really yeah. talented installers, but they miss the mark when it comes to selling, right? Yes. And I'm like, gosh, if I could help these guys, and it's not a matter of selling like convince someone to go with you, even though they shouldn't. It's a, it's convincing them that they should go with you because you're the best, right? Right. Um, so I kind of go back and forth, but have you had any times in your career where you're like, I wish I was better at sales or do you think that oh, sure. the lighting design takes right. care of it? And you're like, man, my designs are just so stellar that I don't have to be really good at sales. No, no. See, that's the other, so you've got design installation or technical and then in the business side. So what you're doing right now is so important because that's an area that's lacking greatly in our industry still is that, People don't know how to formulate these things to sell and to run a business effectively so that they're profitable. So I think there's a huge need for that. And, you know, me personally, you know, where I'm at in my stage of the game, you know, people will say, well, how come you don't advertise? You don't do this. You don't do that. Well, I don't really care anymore about and I should. But, you know, I'm, I'll be 59 this next month. and I'm happy with the workflow that I have right now. I'm busy enough. My ideal goal is to transition more into the educational side. I still want to do the installation, but I'm kind of phasing back and I have tons of referrals and word of mouth. So that works for me. But somebody that doesn't and you're trying to drive volume, I think that's where you're critical to help raise the bar in the industry to help people get there because, you know, it's not really taught much you know, when you go to these different courses or, you know, conferences around the, the country, they'll talk about certain things or the same thing every year. Right. How to, how to do Christmas lighting again, you know, and, it, but there's a lot more to it on a day-to-day -day operational standpoint that this is where you can fill that void in that niche. Just like Jerry McKay has been doing his, you know, the landscape summit or whatever it's called. Um, you know, again, it's another niche that's focused in on the business, which is important. We need to do that. Yeah, for sure. All right. Listen, um, stick around because I want to ask you about Ellie and okay. uh, we're gonna talk more about design. So again, I'm here with uh, Mark Carlson and we're just going to take a quick break, like a two minute break. And we'll be right back um, to uh, hear what else Mark is going to share with us. So thanks for being here, Mark. We'll be right back. Good morning. Are you a military family with a spouse on deployment away from home? Did you know that nonprofit Project Evergreen has thousands of volunteers across the country ready to help military families with lawn, landscape, and snow removal services? We call it Green Care and Snow Care for Troops. If you are a military family and would like to receive this free service, or if you'd like to volunteer to help, visit projectevergreen.org. Project Evergreen, creating a greener, healthier, cooler earth, one yard at a time. Give an assignment. I just got one thing to ask. Can you dig it? I can dig it. He can dig it. She can dig it. We can dig it. They can dig it. Can you dig it? We're calling you a chance. 617-992-4793. I can dig it. See you. Bye. Hey everybody, this is Hecubus from the Nightcap. I'm just sitting here relaxing within the vault with my friends and a tasty, tasty pint. You should stop by and listen sometime. I'm here every Monday through Friday, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern, live only on Turf Up Radio. Your industry, your station. Hey, Turf Sup Radio fans, do you know what time it is? That's right, it's Turf Sup Radio time. Now you can hear the latest updates in green industry news, services, and technology. Learn about new products all while enjoying the best music. If you don't believe me, then ask my good friend Alexa. Just say, launch Turf Sup Radio. Welcome back. It's Ryan Lee. <laughs> it's lighting for profits are on Turfs Up Radio. It's 
535 Eastern. <clears throat> Forgot to tell Mark that his camera was still on during the break. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was awesome. I was man. waiting for you to look and see that. And I figured, how long is he going to go without, like, start smiling? <laughs> I, you know what? It's it's a full time job for me just to remember to unmute my microphone after the break. So mm -hmm. I got important things to worry about here. There you go. Um, all right. Well, welcome back, uh, Mark Carlson from uh, Ellie and Avalon Lighting Design. Let's talk. Let's talk about Ellie because I know okay. it's um, uh, super important for you. It's it's really important for the industry, and I want to be able to get the get it out there and let more people know about it uh, because honestly. I don't, I don't know that as many people know about it as they should. So what, what is Ellie? Ellie, it's an educational resource. It's a tool that I've developed as a means to put parameters to design, landscape lighting design. Because if you see what's going on, like we talked about earlier, is that there's no real way to measure. How do you define who's good versus maybe not so good? in it because everybody can say, oh, I'm a professional designer. Oh, okay. They just assume and they move forward. So there's no, there's no way to define that. And most of the time when you look at landscape lighting, they say, well, it's subjective. It's uh, the beauties in the eye of the beholder, right? All right. Well, everybody has a different view or vision there. So anyways, what I did with this site is I tried to put together a, I, I, the first year I found several landscape lighting designers that I thought do really good work. So if you go to the website, you can see under the educational gallery, there's all kinds of photos in there that are displayed based on categories and so on. And I've also done that too. I've defined the categories of landscape lighting so that it makes a little more sense and then it expands into another area which dives more into the emotional side of what we do so i i may I probably cut off short there on on what i'm explaining but it, it's an educational resource a tool it can help people to do the artwork and the form better and to raise the bar for the industry whether they're professional a practitioner or even a consumer doesn't matter yeah no, I like it. And it, like you said, I was kind of, I've been going through there and it kind of defines like the difference between outdoor lighting and landscape lighting and architectural Correct. lighting, because Correct. we usually, like, if I call it outdoor lighting, that's what I call it. If someone else calls it landscape lighting and then like landscape lighting is just lighting, like that, that's what they call it. So I like that you define it because it really will help the industry as a whole. And it's not going to be a flip of a switch. Um, it's going to take time. It's going to take uh, people right. going, going to it and taking it serious. Do you think that it's um is it more for the experienced professionals out there or a newbie who's like man i really want to i hear about landscape lighting i want to get into the business is there some stuff there that's going to help them i think it can help everybody really I, it, when i first launched it i even included the consumer or the public somebody that has no experience because i wanted them to to understand what was going on but then uh, this last year, I started to separate them out of the mix. I'm going to do a little something different with them. And then I'm just going to keep it towards the profession uh, because there's so much information. And even newbies, you know, if you're brand new in the industry, you can gain a lot. You can use these photos. You can use the documents. I've got guides and standards. I've got critiques on there. I've got all kinds of stuff that's downloadable that you can learn from. And it's it's like a one-stop shop, hopefully. That's my goal over the years to come is to make it a place where people can go and learn at whatever level you're at. That's pretty awesome. Is it free? Like people can just go on there and get it. Right now it's all free, yeah. So people, that's another side that, you know, it's a little frustrating, you know, because although I want to give back, that's one of my goals in life is I want to give back to this industry. That's been good to me, but I do want to monetize some of it this coming year. So this summer I'm planning to start a designers group to help them specifically. And that will be, there'll be a charge for that. There's also a charge for personal critiques. If you want to submit a photo of your work and say, well, where does this really stand? when you're evaluating it from the, the aspect of composition, lighting composition, there's, there's six categories that I use 
and I define all that in, in some of these documents. So then that way you can really use it as a tool, you know, say, well, you know, why is this not so good? Well, you can look at here, well, you don't have the proper balance or contrast or emphasis, or there's different components to that. That's so cool. I mean, you guys heard him. He's going to start charging for some of this stuff. Yeah. Go there now, get it free while you can. But That's anyway, right. I think it's totally fine for you to charge. In fact, I feel like I'm learning this in my own business is like, you give something away for free and that's kind of what people value at. Like, there's no, yeah, and they don't want it or they don't care. They don't think there's any value, but when they pay, they're like, okay, I'll actually go through this. I'll consume. Right. It. And that's where the transformation is going to happen is if they'll actually right. implement. Cause like, you know, I can go there download something right now, but if I don't actually use it, then who cares? Why did I even download it? You know, but if mm -hmm. I pay for it, I'm going to be much more likely to download it and actually fill it out and do these things, which is right. then to transform me to that next level. So I, I love what you're doing. And I right. hope we'll go to it. What is the name of the website? It's, uh, well, it's www.landscapelightinginitiative.org. Okay, cool. So, and you can, like I say, you can get a ton of information off of there. Um, I just think that it's, if somebody spends the time, you know, take it seriously, you can really dig up a lot of good information. And then the future of Ellie, what I'm really hoping to get more involved with is I want to be able to start showing the human health side of what, what lighting can do when combined with nature towards healing, towards, you know, kind of gets a little deeper and more progressive, but that's where I really want to go as my end game with it. Is there any studies on that stuff now or you're, you're there are, there's, there's been studies more specifically towards nature and landscape or or seeing greenery seeing landscapes they've been doing this study since the 70s and 80s a lot of the doctors so there is documents on that i don't have them up on the ellie site but there there are references and then nowadays even there's there's groups out there that are finding how healing light is the source you know the colors of light there's there it gets like I say, it kind of goes off into an alternative um, medicines and things like that. But, you know, it's we're still at the forefront. And my vantage point is, is if we can show that the positives, the benefits of landscape lighting more from the healing aspect and why it's good, whether it's psychologically or physiologically, then we can now raise our rates up. See what I'm saying? as a business, we're treated more professionally. We're more like doctors, lawyers, you know, we're, we're considered a professional, you know, state then because we're healing people. I like that. See, Dr. Lee and Dr. Carlson here. There you go. I like well, that. it could get there. That's, that's my hope before I kick off, you know, at least <laughs> somebody I'm going to write some books on all this down the road here. I'm not quite ready yet on that, but, um, that's hopefully my end game and then I can retire. So. It, I, I love it. I mean, we, there, there's already benefits to lighting and we know that there's those health benefits of it. If, if we've ever seen lighting and if you've ever done a demo or if you've ever had it, I mean, I talk about that. Like when I, when I first drove up to my house after my, we got the very first lights, I mean, we all know that emotion. Like, you know, that feeling you drive up and you're yeah. like, holy cow, it just feels so welcoming and inviting and, it can turn a really bad day into a really good one really quick. Right. Uh, sitting out on a patio, wherever it is, like it really does mm -hmm. have that. So it's cool that you're doing it. It's cool. If it'd be nice if uh, we could attract some attention to it so that there could be some more studies done. So that right. there could be some of this stuff to make it so that we don't have to just tell people about it. People will know about it and they'll be coming to us. Like you right. said, as doctors, right. as physicians, as healers, like, and I really need this in my life. It's not just, because I want to be flashy or it's not just because I want security. Like I really want to be able to relax. I mean, it's like uh, a hot tub. Did you know in Texas, when I bought a hot tub, this has nothing to do with lighting. If you get a, um, a note from a uh, physical therapist, because a hot tub is healing, uh, right. you don't have to pay sales tax for some reason. So I saved like 500 bucks in sales tax because, there you, go. Healing, you know, but I wasn't buying it for that, but it, it did. Right. It, it does heal. So another another angle right there, you know. Yeah. Same with lighting, you know. If you can, maybe they can write off the whole lighting system as a as a healing method for you know their healthcare. Who knows? 
Yeah, that's a good point. No, that's awesome. Well, I, I you know, no, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that I think, uh, you know, we, we see the other side of lighting as like it's for entertainment and the, the, the awesomeness of seeing lights in the yard, but there's also that other side for restoration and healing and relaxation. It's calming. It lowers stress, you know, blood pressure. There's a lot of positives on that side of it. Just having a little relaxation garden, it can be simple and yet it does the trick. And then, you know, I've had customers do that too, where they, they say, you know, when he gets home, he's, he's on 10 different boards. He's been in the office all day, stressing out, going to have a heart attack, comes home, he sits on the porch, he pours himself a drink, he smokes a cigar and he just looks at the light and he feels so refreshed and healed after the day, just looking at your lighting, you know, that type of thing. It's funny. Great. That'd be a great testimonial for sure. Yeah, there you go. Well, I encourage everybody to um, work on the design aspect of your business. Um, I think it's crucial. I think there's so many different ways to differentiate yourself. So if you're in Mark's area, well, don't try to differentiate yourself by being a better lighting designer because he's already got you. Uh, but if you're anywhere else, um, you know, use it as, as one of your advantages. I mean, I remember we would go in and, and there were some projects where, at least in my opinion, there wasn't a whole lot like outside the box thinking it was like, okay, there's really only so much that we can do to this house, but we would still always try to find one or two little areas that we knew that if we brought up that no one else was going to bring up, mm -hmm. you know, who knows if that was the one thing that got us the job, but it was one more thing that helped them want right. to do us. So, um, I think for sure, like hammer down on design and I know, um, it's super important. A lot of people are big on, you know, like, the the install aspect or customer service or business like me but that doesn't mean that you should overlook design at all right, right. so um i, I think, think design is kind of the backbone well they're all they're all important they're equally important but you know i i, I just wanted a, a one more comment you know you had andy thomas on here a couple weeks two weeks back i think it was yeah he's a direct competitor of mine here in town um there's what's interesting and i want to give hope to people is that you know you look at our market here in sacramento and there's five of us that compete that's all right. within 20 25 minutes of each other so i got andy i got scott sissom with elegant outdoor i've got tommy the lighting geek there's uh michael sestak with sestak lighting and then uh I'm trying to remember. oh michelle well I'm, I'm not sure so those there's at least four others yeah. that are you know pretty competitive and aggressive and we're all within 20 minutes and we we rarely run across each other which is kind of interesting i see signs all over the place but you know we each have our little thing that we do and and we can compete on our own level so it's it's fun and i'd say i'd encourage others to just say don't be afraid of competition you can still do your thing but find what's important what you can provide that's different from somebody else yeah i love it that's great advice and i think you guys have done that because everyone seems to be doing well you guys don't hate each other andy said he was going right. to burn down tommy's trailer or something yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> other, other than that i think things are going great <laughs> just don't get on that guy's bad list um, yeah there you right, go. Well, cool. listen man i know the time went quick i wish we could stay on longer but um yeah. i really appreciate you taking time to get on here um, if people want to get a hold of you, what's the best way? Um, either through Avalon Lighting or through Ellie. Um, I'm trying to do more with Ellie. So Avalon, even though it's been around for a long time, it's, you know, it's avalonlighting.com. That's my website. And my email is markcarlson33 at gmail.com. And everything goes through that. So okay, that's the best way. Awesome. Well, mm -hmm. seriously, thanks so much for uh, being for having me. And fun. You're, you're awesome. And I'm sure this won't be the last time we have you on here. So number six right yeah. there, buddy. I was going to say have a good time, but you already are. So All right, I man. think you'll take a nap now because, you know, I'm old. So. You earned it. You earned it. <laughs> After mandatory. All right, guys. Stick Thank around. You. We'll be right back in just a couple minutes.
attention all veterans. Have you heard about Turfs Up Radio's Jobs for Vets program? If you are looking for a job and you're interested in working in the landscape and snow removal profession, there just might be a company in your local area that is looking to hire. All you have to do is send us your resume at jobsforvets at turfsupradio.com. That's jobsforvets at turfsupradio.com. Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. Yeah. Saturdays, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m., The Weekend Review. The Weekend Review. The Weekend Review. With all of your favorite Turfs Up Radio hosts, including Hecatus, Jose, Roland, Daniel, I'll we Pump You Up Bowls. You are. The Wise Guy, Steve Cohen. He's a big boy. He knows what he said. What'd you say? The Green Veteran. Giddy up. Holly, let's get physical, Bowles. Wayne, the prophet, Bowles, and many more. Join us live as we unpack the week and share what you may have missed live on Turfs Up Radio. That's the Weekend Review, Saturdays at 9 to 10 a.m. right here on Turfs Up Radio. Your industry, your station. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Hey, this is Jeff Hester, senior contributor and co-host of the Weekend Review here on Turfs Up Radio. Can't make it to major green industry events, but want to stay connected? Don't worry, we have you covered. Be sure to download the Turfs Up Radio app or visit our website. We'll bring you the live coverage you need to keep you up to date with everything that happens in our industry. And to find out where we'll be next, simply visit greenindustryevents.com. That's greenindustryevents.com. And always remember, Turfs Up Radio, your industry, your station. There, I did it again. I forgot to unmute the mic. <laughs> oh, one of these days, you've heard the old joke. How many episodes does it take Ryan? Well, more than six. We know that. You guys just finished up an awesome interview with Mark Carlson of the Experiential Landscape Lighting Initiative and Avalon Lighting Design. The guy knows his stuff, man. And uh, I tell you what, if I was... In his area, I would be nervous. I'd be like, okay, I got to I gotta get my A game on. I got to be a good designer because I know he's coming after me or whatever. But that's when I just close on the spot, get it done, and not even give him a chance because I know he would blow me out of the water with his design. So I'd have to blow him out of the water with my salesmanship. But, uh, man, I'm telling you guys, go check out his uh, stuff. Go check out his website and uh, support him because he's doing good stuff. And, uh, you know, he's doing it for free right now. So, Go check it out. And then when he offers his paid stuff, do that because you're going to get even more value out of it because you paid money. So what I want to do is uh, finish up the uh, the episode here with my lighting tip of the week. And uh, what I want to talk about, you know, at the top of the show, I talked a little bit about uh, risk and uh, how important it is. And uh, Mark took a risk, right? He, he, he was one of the first guys to actually go all in with landscape lighting in his area. So what risks are you guys taking? You know, what, what, what are you guys doing to elevate your game? And again, like doing the advertisement in something that, that people have already done isn't a huge risk, you know, signing up with my program where people have already come in and gotten results is not a huge risk. Uh, and Darren, Darren, I actually already did the prank. You missed it, man. I do that right at the top because I want to give people what they want and people want to hear the prank. So you're going to have to listen to the podcast, go download and subscribe to lighting for profits on any of the podcast networks. I already did the prank. I did my best English accent and it was terrible. And, uh, the, the, the guys at, uh, or the guys, it was Paige at Stay Off the Roof. She did an awesome job. She was done with me. She's never going to talk to me ever again. So what I want to leave you with, my lighting tip of the week, is this. Start thinking bigger. Okay? I'm giving you permission. I'm giving you permission because you need permission. Why do I know that? Because I needed permission. Like, we, we limit ourselves. We have these false beliefs. Okay? And I'm telling you right now that you need to start thinking bigger. When I started my landscape lighting business, my brother told me that he had done a job. He'd done two jobs for $4,000 a piece. And I was like, what? $4,000? Someone spent $4,000 on landscape lighting? Oh, my gosh. That's insane. And I'm like, serious? Like, dude, that's, that's a lot of money. Well, $4,000 is not a lot of money when you're talking landscape lighting. Okay? These people have tons of money. 
and they spend tons of money on their house and landscape and pool and everything else. And you need to start thinking bigger. Okay. I used to think that I couldn't replace myself. I used to think, oh, I'm the only one that can go do sales because they want to, they want to meet the owner. Hey, that's a lie. Start acting like who you want to be, not like who you are, and start thinking bigger. Raise your prices. You gotta, you gotta start, you gotta account for the overhead that you're going to have, right? Because Otherwise, you're never going to be able to hire that next person. Most everybody I know that I've talked to within the last seven days that owns a landscape lighting business needs an installer right now. They're like, oh, I'm behind, right? They need installers, right? And in order to do that, you've got to have enough sales. And in order to have enough sales, you got to have someone to answer the phones and all these things. So you need money, right? And you're probably going to have to pay them double what you want to pay them. So you need money. That's called overhead, right? So where is that going to come from? You've got to raise your price. You've got to start acting like who you want to be, not like who you are. And in order to, listen, you're just going to have to get more leads. You're going to have to sell more jobs. You're going to have to account for that overhead that's, that's, that's not there yet, right? And, and it's okay. If you're just getting started, like I was the same way. I sold as kind of the cheap guy. I'm like, hey, we can do the same thing. We're as good as those guys, but we can do it for less price because we don't have the overhead, right? So, you know, you got you got to do what you got to do to get started. But after that, then you need to do what you need to do to get to the next level. So get unsatisfied. Too many of us are satisfied with what we're getting. Okay. We're not like, we don't love where we're at, but we're satisfied. You know, we're like, eh, it's okay. You know, could do better, but get unsatisfied, be relentless and get the results that you know, you should have already had by now. Okay. So start thinking bigger and you know, what happens is landscape lighting, you know, it's, there's some big money, right? You can go out and sell a job, make five grand profit, like not like pretty quick. Like you can, you can get five grand cash pretty quick in your pocket, right? And that's great for this week. But what about next week? What about next month? And so the, the trick here is this, when you have a good week, a good day, a good month, whatever it is, yeah, reward yourself, like go out to a nice dinner, whatever, take a minute and take, take some time off. But then after that, like get back in the grind and you have to put yourself in a mindset, in a position that you don't have that money, right? Like I, I put that in accounts. Um, I, I can't remember the name of the book. It's, I think it's called Profit First. Okay, I haven't even implemented his whole system, but I've been doing this. When I read his book, I'm like, man, I've been doing this. Not to his level. The guy is a genius. But I just put money aside into an account that I don't see because then it's not real. And then it's like, oh, crap, my checking account's only down to five grand. I better get out and hustle. Hustle mode, right? So, um, that's not real money. Like you need to get rid of it so that you are, can be unsatisfied the whole time and keep digging and keep getting to the next level. And it's for a good reason. It's because you're going to try to go from business operator to business owner, because you don't want to be, you know, one year, five year, 10 year, 20 years later going, man, I shoulda, coulda, woulda. You don't want to be saying that stuff. You want to be in a position where you can sell the company, retire, do what you want. Even if you don't want to sell your company, by the way, and I got this from Emith. Even if you don't want to sell your company, you need to build it like you're going to sell it. And that, I promise you guys, is some of the best advice you'll ever get anywhere. Because when you build it like it's sellable now, you now have a business, not a paid hobby. I mean, that's, that's when you get to the next level. That's when you replace yourself. And that's when you go to work because you want to go to work, not because you have to go to work. That's the goal here, guys. That's the goal. So. You know, most people, they don't think about what's possible. They, they don't think about what's possible. We get stuck in our own reality and forget what is out there, you know? So my advice, don't be limited by your limited beliefs, okay? And they're false beliefs, okay? Stop lying to yourself. Stop making excuses. Do what you got to do to get to the next level and create opportunities for yourselves to live the life that you never really even dreamed of because you never thought of what's possible. Remember, we're talking about thinking bigger, and creating opportunities for us that we didn't even know was possible. So start now. Don't look back. Your future self will thank you. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me. I want to thank my guest, Mark Carlson, for joining me. And remind you guys, if you want to subscribe to the podcast, go to turfsupradio.com. Go to uh, go there, and you can uh, search for my podcast. You can download it and subscribe and everything, everything else like that. So, guys, I hope you have a wonderful week. And keep moving forward. That's, that's, my, that's my big thing. Keep moving forward. And we will plan on seeing you guys next week, uh, Tuesday at 5 o'clock, right? Tuesday at 5 Eastern. So you guys, send me a message too. 
send me a message to support at ryanleecoaching.com and let me know if you want me to prank your company because it's going to be a lot of fun. And you can choose the accent. You could choose the skit. I'll do it. All right, guys. You guys have a good week. Keep moving forward.